First, you can set a Spotify song as your alarm tone without downloading any additional app. Go to your alarms, click on the alarm sound and then set Spotify. And then it'll give you a bunch of playlists that you can choose from. Or you can just search for a song that you like from Spotify and then have that set as your alarm tone. That's it. And now when you go back, you will see that the alarm would just open up with that song. Next, a lot of times when I'm just shooting or recording or on a Zoom discussion, I just mute my phone and then I forget to come out of it. That's where temporarily muting your phone really works for you. Now my temporary mute is set to 20 minutes, but you can go into details and you can change that to whatever value you want. Tap on custom and then you can decide how many minutes. So if you want to go all the way to 30 minutes or even more, all up to you. Next, in your gallery, you can have one album that's always in sync between you and your friends or your family members. So if you put one photo in that gallery, it will show up in that album across your friends and family phones. To set this up, go into your gallery, click on menu and then on shared albums. Now create an album and then invite people to it. You can invite your contacts that are already listed or you can just type in their Samsung account ID. That ID can be found at the top of settings just like that. Or if they don't have one, just ask them to create by going into accounts and backup, manage accounts, and then add an account and then choose Samsung. That's it. They'll have a Samsung account ready. And then you can enter that account ID, tap on invite, and your friend in their shared albums can go into settings, into invitations, and then accept that invitation. That's it. You guys will then have an album that's already synced between you two. And guys, before we move on, this is just part one of this video. I'll be putting out a part two and then similar videos in the future. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon. It really supports my channel and helps me grow faster. Now let's move on. Now, if you want to transfer very large files, you don't need to use Google Drive, vTransfer or Dropbox. Let me show you how. So let's have selected these files. Just for this demonstration purpose, let me show you it's about 2.03 gigabytes. Tap on share and then scroll down to link sharing. No Google Drive, no Dropbox. This is inbuilt into Samsung phones running One UI. Samsung will upload all of this to Samsung Cloud and give you a link that can be shared with anyone, whether or not they have a Samsung phone or not. It's like a link that they can just tap and then it will download. You can obviously share it with, you know, whoever you want across these apps or just copy and paste the link. But what if you have to send very large files to someone who's sitting right next to you? You don't have to do any of this then. If the person next to you has a Samsung phone, then just select the files, tap on share, and then use quick share. And then on the recipient's phone, just make sure that you go in the quick settings panel and quick share is turned on. That way, the phone can be found onto your phone. Then just tap on the phone and then the recipient phone will get a message that says, do you want to accept the file transfer? They say yes, and that's it. The file transfer starts. And you can see that this is two gigabytes that's getting transferred at amazing speeds all wirelessly. But if you're trying to send file to someone who's not using a Samsung phone, you can use nearby share, which is, you know, an Android functionality. And then all of these files will go at almost the same speeds. Of course, the recipient's phone must have nearby share turned on just the way quick share should have been turned on on a Samsung device. And then you can transfer. And guess what? You don't need any internet connection or to be on the same Wi-Fi network for this to work. Next, your Samsung phone can back up all your important data every 24 hours on its own. So let's say your phone got stolen, corrupt, or you're setting up a new phone. You can just restore all of that. Go into accounts and backup, then click on backup data, and then just see everything that can be backed up. It's important to also go and see what can't be backed up so you're not surprised. Now, all of this is associated with your Samsung account and uploaded to Samsung Cloud. So to restore this, you just have to connect your new phone to your Samsung account. Now, we tend to have a lot of apps on our phone and they keep sucking battery because they have their own background processes. Worst part is we don't even know about it or get to know about it. So the best thing to do would be to manually manage these background processes for these apps once and for all. And that way you can actually increase the battery life of your phone. To do this, go into settings, scroll down to battery and device care, then into battery, and then background usage limits. If there are certain apps that you use very seldom or don't want notifications from unless you've recently opened them, you can put them to sleep. If there are certain apps that you never want notifications from, you can put them in deep sleep. And then if there are certain apps that you use less often, but are important and always want to be notified when something's new, you can put them in never sleeping apps. 
Now we all know that the side key cannot be configured to launch Google Assistant, but instead Bixby, which we don't use. But I've configured it in a way that I can launch Google Assistant. There's a link in the description, which if you open, will take you to this page and download an app. Set Google and then go into settings, go into advanced features and then go into side key settings. Under press and hold, make sure you set power off menu for double press. Tap on open app and set Bixby Assistant Remapper. A lot of us actually ignore the fact that the sound output of our phone may not be perfectly tuned for our ears. If you go into adapt sound settings just the way I did, go into test my hearing when you've connected a pair of earphones, go through this and you can tune the sound output of your phone to exactly deliver the kind of music and audio that your ears would love. Depending on whether it's allowed in your country, you may have the option to record phone calls both incoming and outgoing. You can even set automatic recording of all calls or calls from specific phone numbers that you define or just unknown numbers. And you know, even more so today, a lot of my discussions and meetings happen on phones and just having a record of all the meeting minutes recorded as a phone call is amazing. And of course, I can just share these recordings with whoever I want uh, with my choice of platform. All right, that's it guys. Those were 10 things that I think were really deep into One UI settings and I just wanted to bring that out for you guys just to make your phone usage a little better. Now this is just part one. I will be putting out a part two pretty soon so make sure you're subscribed and thank you for watching guys. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one.